I'm Rodney. I'm Jamal. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Vince. And we are under, under construction. construction. Uh, this week we're gonna start off with the hurricanes. <laughs> they got Why do you have that mic? <laughs> hey, this is this is what happens when 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 you take off a week, week and a half from each other. This is gonna be rich. So, so, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure so the hurricanes uh, were swept <laughs> the hurricanes. by the uh, Boston Bruins, <laughs> and uh, oh, it was a successful season. Uh, we got our asses handed to us. Yeah. What do you guys think about it? Um, look, man, I I don't. We are not hockey savants here at Under Construction, but I've been watching sports long enough to see when a team is just better. better. I can, I can, you can clearly see there was a talent discrepancy between the Bruins <laughs> and the Canes. I think that's pretty obvious. It's evident. It's and evident. man, the disappointing part is like it wasn't close at any point. Man. <laughs> like, okay, game was it three? It was two. One. Game three. Game, game three. Game two, it was two one. So that was a pretty good game. Game two I, was terrible. Oh I, I, outside of game three, man, it was just. The blood I mean, man. It was a blood <laughs> man. It, it was it was nothing to see. It was here. it was yeah. karma. It was it was it was karma. It was basically the the hockey guy saying, "Hey, it's not y'all's time. We we let y'all have fun for a couple weeks. Now we got we got to snatch it back." Yeah. Because literally, just in the previous series, we 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 spanked up on New York four zero. We was we was beating those guys like five two five one, yeah. and then we got the same thing. Yeah. And as I was watching game two, I was like. Damn, this is what it feels like. Right? This is how New York feel right now. The problem is, it's like, <laughs> interesting nugget. I was looking at the the uh, the score summaries for the game. We were outscored seventeen to five so wow. season, the just, whole series. Wow. That's just crazy. Yeah, that's just, domination. That is domination. I'm gonna tell you how sad it is. We didn't even open up the segment with what the. I was like, oh yeah, yeah exactly. It's no use now. <laughs> it was gonna no, be what the fuck. It was like, what the hell? Like, what the hell? Hey, let me tell you something. Right. Let me let me switch it. Let me switch it. Um, I I noticed something. Um, these last this last month or so that we we've been like hockey fans, quote right. unquote. It's okay to have more than one team mm-hmm. in the sport of hockey. Please explain. I joined the Hurricanes group, you know, trying to get my knowledge up and all that good stuff. And when, when we were playing New York, there were a lot of New York slash Carolina Hurricane fans in okay. the group. All right. Then we started playing the the Bruins. And it's a lot of Bruin fans who are Carolina Hurricane fans as well. So I pose a question. I'm like, hey, how does this work? Because I'm primarily <laughs> basketball, football. We don't do that. Now, granted, it's people who have more than one team, but we don't accept that. I would say that there are a lot of Charlotte Hornet Steph Curry fans. There's a lot of stuff Charlotte Hornet LeBron James fans. I mean, I, I guess in basketball, it's more of an individualistic player thing. So you might have a player of a, of, of a certain team that, that you may be interested in, but you may be fans of your own time. But, you, but you're not saying that there are people out there that have fans of two teams. Not yeah. necessarily. No, it has. Football, I, 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 I would say, if you look at it, the, the reason why I would say that that is, is because we're a transplant State. I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm state. not giving the credit to the And all of our franchises are fairly new. Think about this. You have a lot of Panther Redskins fans still. You got a lot of Panther Cowboys fans still. Okay, when I was younger, as far as the NFL go, I didn't really have a football team. The closest team that I was to being a fan of was the Buffalo Bills. Because if you remember the early 90s, no, it, was, it, was, yeah. it, it was a fun team to watch. It was, it really it, was. It was a fun Herbert team. Thomas, Jim Kelly, yeah, yeah. Don Reedy, yeah. uh, Canadians, all those guys. But when, when Carolina came to town, I was 100% Carolina. 100% Carolina. So I wasn't. So I'm going to be real with you. I, was, I, was, I wasn't up until... Four, you are now. Know. You got better. Yeah, yeah, I'm better oh, now. Something I noticed my with, the, with the last... <laughs> <laughs> Something I noticed with the last Canes game, they were uh, these obnoxious Boston people. They're like roaches. They show up everywhere. Like, they show up in every little crevice of Carolina. Every little crevice of Carolina sports, and they were and they were there in the stands at the Canes game, at the last game. Like how convenient you came to a game where you knew you were going to win and close the series. But whatever, that's just another story for another time, man. So to both of y'all's point, there's a lot of people 
from Boston mm -hmm. who live in Raleigh, who live in Charlotte. Because nobody retires and move up north. Yeah, on, uh, like who would retire yeah. in Boston? Who wants yeah, to do that? Yeah. So, um, that didn't look like people who had two teams with me. It just looked like Boston fans who were like, oh, we're just going to go infiltrate Raleigh and be obnoxious <laughs> and don't get me started. But, yeah, so I, I, I get the whole two-team thing sometime, man, but I, I, I just don't buy it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I yeah. know I know situations come up where I grew up in California. I'm, I'm born in California, but I grew up in Charlotte, so I might be a Lakers slash Hornet fan. Mm -hmm. I get situations like, like that. that right. I grew up a Panthers fan, but, but my son plays for the Packers. So I'm a Panthers fan. But, but when you when your birth certificate says Presbyterian Hospital, <laughs> you went to like States for Old Elementary School all the way up to like West Charlotte High School. These are all Charlotte yeah, yeah, and, 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 you, and you like Steelers, baby, because my uncle was a Steelers. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. Anyway, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it. And then, and then I, want, I also want to give a final shout out to the True Hurricanes fans, right? Who gave the team a standing ovation and, and, on an awesome season. And thank you for letting fans like us join along the bandwagon <laughs> for uh, that short amount. And of shout out to Cody Zeller for 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 being on the horn and not getting injured. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> What the fuck was that, Vince? <laughs> we, we are glad Cody Zeller is not on the injury report after going on, after we, doing the siren thing. We all knew. We we all were thinking it. We all were, hey, and, and, and it's like, damn, before the season? <laughs> Don't do so, this, Cody. Good stuff. Good stuff on that. All right, we're going to move on to our uh, Panthers uh, <laughs> segment called Back to Back Winning Seasons, <laughs> because... which we never had. <laughs> um, recently, the Panthers uh, – Stated they were they were going to honor uh, four members of the past teams with the uh, Ring of Honor: uh, Steve Smith, Jake Delone, Jordan Gross, and Wesley Walls. Uh, how do you guys feel about this? I this, this one one name is not like the to me. Why? Yeah, why? Um, why? What I think I know his name. Yeah, yeah. I'm, sure we're all I'm pretty sure we know the name. name. Yeah. One <laughs> name is not like the others. To Rodney. Uh, Vince, you want to start us off? Okay, now, now let time? me ask you guys this. When it comes to this Ring of Honor, uh, do you guys know what the requirements are to, to be in the Ring of Honor? I, I haven't looked it the up. The thing is, man, I, I, I have... decent Panthers player? I, I have, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not much, really. Man. <laughs> but I, I look at this, and I, I haven't read it for myself either, but I'm just looking at this list. I'm like, man, mainly poly popularity. It has to be. It has to be. It has to be. Let's be clear about something. I think most of the lists we're okay with. It's just this one. And I'm going to be honest with you. There's more than one name that I'm not okay with. Okay. But I can say there's one in the possible. When you look at big picture, the impact on the city and the culture, you kind of have to give it to them or not. Uh, before we get to this one name, I honestly think that what this is, I think it's a microcosm of the problem that we're having in the Hornets fan base. Because mm. when you go back and look at the classic Hornets, and even though we had so many great players come through, right. at the end of the day, we mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. saw an Eastern Conference Finals. Right. Yep. So whenever people say, I want this player, this player's jersey retired, well, what did they do? Right. They right. made some highlights, right. but but... I don't in, see in the long run. It's like what? What does it really mean? In, exactly. in the grand yeah. scope of things, it's like okay, well, yeah, LJ and Warner were awesome, but how far did we really get? Exactly. <laughs> gotcha. So I, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, Jake Delone does not belong with us next to me. Just because you can sell me some Bojangles chicken does not believe you, does not mean you need to be on the list. Hey, I'm hey, sorry. I'm tell sorry. Us how you really Jake Delone does not need to be on this list. He. I'm, I, I can't forgive him for the six picks. I'm sorry. I'm going to play, well, I kind of And then Wesley Walls, I'd rather Kevin Green. But you I, go ahead, Jamal. <laughs> I, I am surprisingly going to argue in favor of Jake DeLone. I'm, and so I'm, we're not all in agreement. I, well, kind of, sort of. But I'm not, to me, I'm not like for or against it. And I'm going to tell you why. All right? <clears throat> Jake DeLone, we will, we'll talk about before the Tommy John surgery, okay? Mm -hmm. He was what he was. He was average. average quarterback at best, all right? We're not talking about... He's not better than Cam. He's not better than Cam. Let's, let's just stop that nonsense <laughs> off the jump, man. <laughs> but 
here is why I'm not surprised at all he's on this ring of honor because you cannot argue during Jake's tenure here when it when it was good. Let's let's please frame it as that. When it was good, Jake DeLone was a huge part of the Panthers' identity. That is very hard to argue, whether you like the guy or whether you don't like the guy. It was very hard to talk about the Carolina Panthers without talking about Jake DeLone. Let's also not act like he didn't do a lot of good things when it was good. He, I think he may be still be the leader in fourth quarter comebacks for the Carolina Panthers. That's just truth. You don't have to like the guy, but let's be fair when it comes to him. We did go to a Super Bowl with him as quarterback. Yes, we had an amazing, I know what you're going to say. Yes, we had one of the best D-lines ever. <laughs> yes, we had an amazing running game. And yes, we had a great defense. However, that does not discount the fact that this guy right here was a, was a really good leader, and he led us to a lot of fourth quarter comebacks. You're going to say, well, we wouldn't have had to come back if he wasn't <laughs> <laughs> through all those things. Hey, you know what? You kind of – Rex Kessman went to the Super Bowl. <laughs> you kind of you gotta change, change what I was going to say on all of that. And when, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the highlights, when you look at the tape, um, everything you say, I co-sign. But I think, I think this is politics coming from Texas. With this mm -hmm. ring of honor, because the fan base is so polarized with the quarterback conversation here, right, yeah. I think that the, the law was added more so to appease yeah. to that demographic who says Dillon was the best. Let, but let me tell you why I'm I'm not so I'm not sour on that because the thing is at the end of the day, man, it's not like it's the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it, it's, it's not. Which like, is why I was asking if you, know, you guys knew what the requirements. You know what I mean? Are, uh, it's politics. <laughs> yeah, but my pro that's probably why I don't have such a problem with it because yeah. for the main reason I don't have a problem with it because it's just so hard to talk about the Carolina Panthers history without Jake talking DeLong. about Jake, De Jake, Jake DeLone. That's probably it because bad Jake DeLone obviously doesn't deserve to be in this conversation. The, the, the guy who was who you were scared was going to turn the ball every time he dropped back, that Jake DeLone does not, obviously doesn't deserve this. But the guy who did a lot of good things for us and the guy who was on all the Bojangles commercials and the guy who was who was the who probably was the face of the franchise. To, I mean, let's be honest. I, I get it. I, I I understand it. You might not like it, but I understand it. Though. So let me ask you a question. So, if you guys had an opportunity to put your four in, starting this this upcoming season, and you can replace this list, who's the four that you would put in? Man. Playing now, even it, well, no, well, not, no, no, not, not active. Okay. So I, let, let, let me go for it. Let me give you time. Let me give you guys time to think. All right. So I will go obviously with Smith, mm -hmm. uh, Gross. Yeah, I would say Mike Minner. Mike Minner, and then my fourth one is the Panthers' best player ever, Julius Peppers. Yeah, I, I'd replace one of those people. I, I I'd probably go Chris Gamble over Mike Minner. That's, 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 only, fair. that's, that's fair. the only name I would replace. That's fair. That's um, my, my I, would, exactly the same. I would take off the loan and Wesley Walls. I would add Julius Peppers and Brad Hoover. Wow. And wow. Brad Hoover, statistically speaking, probably will not justify an argument here, but his impact on the team, yeah, the Brad Hoover part. was what Luke Keekley is now. Now, here's something we here's a name we have not talked about. Why is John Casey not on the list? Mm. Ooh. Good one. That's Ooh. good. That's good. That's good. I, he, yeah. Longest tenure yeah. Panther, most points. And yeah. It's, you know, the average fan is going to always. And I'm not going to harp on that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna, But y'all know what I'm talking yeah. about. Every, every Carolina Panthers fan is going to harp on that. But the, the truth of the matter is, Casey did so many great things for this team. He still is the leader in points of this franchise. Yeah. So I, it's. It's a little surprising that he's not on those. Yeah. He's not on and it hurt. That, 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 that kid hurt. Yeah, that yeah, kid hurt. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> our next uh, thing we're going to jump into is uh, Panthers are going to be featured on Amazon's uh, All or Nothing series. Uh, it's going to chronicle uh, Tepper's first season as the uh, the, the uh, owner of the Panthers and an uh, up and down roller coaster season. Jamal, what do you think of it? Do you, do you think it's a good watch? Oh no, it's an excellent watch. I, I I don't I don't even care if it's perceived as like boring day to day stuff. Like for if you are a fan of this team, you want to see like behind the scenes stuff. But 
I mean, there's a couple things I'm looking forward to. Like, I, I, what I'm looking forward to is when it went bad. Like, gotcha. Like, what happened inside that locker room? What happened amongst the players when we were losing seven games in a row? Like, that's that's what I want to see. Like, well, how did the team kind of train the room? Yeah, like how did they rally around each other or respond or whatever? You know what I mean? And Specifically, how, what happened? What was going on with Cam when he hurt himself? Gotcha. What, what what was his approach? What was Cam like? No, man, I I don't want to sit out. I'm I want to play. Was was there any conflict of interest between management and Cam Newton when that went down? So, a couple things I'm really looking forward to, and, and another like, you know, what what happened when we lost those games we weren't supposed to lose, like to the Redskins, mm. like like. What what went on in that locker room after that? What 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 went on in the locker room when we beat Philadelphia? Yeah, we came like back. Yeah. So a lot of stuff I'm looking for. See, to um, I'm going to take a I'm going to take a different approach to this. I know that we we pretty much since Temper got here, we've been on the whole Temper 2020 track. Mm-hmm. He he hasn't made a bad move whether it's football or public relations mm-hmm. in any way. However, I'm a little worried. That he is doing too much too, too early. Uh, I, see we I love the I love I love the idea of the series. I'm definitely going to watch. They did one uh, this Amazon series. They did one on the Arizona Cardinals a couple years ago, and I watched that a few months. ago. I was actually bored and just came across it, mm-hmm. and um, it, it's good. It's it's great. It's okay. it's pretty dope. But I'm wondering if they because with him only having been here for one year. My question is, the culture that he wants the Carolina Panthers to be, has that culture been cemented already? And by opening up your doors to the public so soon, while you're still in that transitional process, well, I'm before, not, before we won anything. Before, yeah. Before, before, <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if this would be... Kind of detrimental to the team. Yeah, yeah. if it may if it and, may pull back in the space. And it doesn't help we drafted Will Greer too. I and was then, gonna leave that alive. And, and then we're gonna touch that. And then <laughs> another thing I mentioned in is in his uh what was the thought process when they brought in Eric Reed? Like what what was those? Yeah, that would be like, a hot one, yeah. Like I I wanna see like what was Ron Rivera's opinion versus Tepper's? Or was it more of a Tepper move? Or did they talk to the certain players on the team? Yeah. And what would the captain say? Yeah. That's, that's one thing I'm interested in as well. And keep in mind. Even if there was uh, dissent on that decision, I doubt that gets aired. Because gotcha. you know how the media go. The media, mm-hmm. they want to find anything. They'll take anything. something and they're wrong with it. And yeah. I doubt that gets played. And, and he just signed a new three-year deal with Carolina, so I doubt that makes it to right. the documentary. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. Right. All right, we're going to segue into uh, oh, a love of a loser yeah. uh, segment called The uh, Tenth Pick. Tip, 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 tip. Do we have to? So, uh, oh, God, the NBA draft lottery was it last Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> of course, the Hornets didn't move up in, in the draft position. Of course. We're stuck with the 12th pick and, uh, and the ultimate fate of Bo Bo. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, why is there a black cat running around Time Warner Cable Arena? And how do we get rid of this mother sucker? Uh, Let's go, guys. Let's let's, let's, let's dig into this. I don't. Close, I don't even know how to address this. And I'm gonna be honest with you. When 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 Buddy was up there calling out the pick, and when Charlotte came up twelve, no, I didn't no even. Emotion. I didn't even know. I didn't even. No I didn't even. Yeah, because it's like no emotion. I, I, I there's no way I can expect to win thirty nine games and then come out with a top four draft pick. What I was upset about. <laughs> <laughs> was the fact that that team from Louisiana ended up with the number one pick. LeBron James and his LA Lakers ended up with the four pick. That's what hurt me. And the Memphis most. ended up with the two pick. That's what hurt me the most. But it was easier for me to digest because the look on Zion's face <laughs> when the New Orleans got that number one pick. It's like, whoa, <laughs> man, I got to live in New Orleans. Like y'all, y'all, y'all ever, like, ate somebody's food that wasn't good? And they say, how was it? That was Zion's <laughs> face. It was good. like, Zion was like, it's good. It's <laughs> okay. It's straight. It's straight. It's straight. It's straight. It's straight. It's straight. Oh, the draft is the draft. 
Um, yeah. we're, I, I don't want to really get into prospects today because we got more than enough time to talk more about that. Yeah, yeah, that. That will come. Yeah. But the draft was the draft for me. Got you. So, um, usually, like, when this draft lottery comes around, I usually make it a point to, like, all right, I will be in front of a TV just so I can see what's what. It's negative Nancy all week. <laughs> this, the, I've been in a really grumpy mood this week. I, I, I will be the first to tell you I've been extra grumpy this week. Um, so, when the draft lottery came around this time, I was like, I'm not watching that shit, man. I'm sorry. I just I, – I, I had no interest in the draft lottery. For a couple of reasons. Number one, because I've been on the trade to pick train forever, so I, it hardly mattered where this pick was. And I did, I, and the main reason I didn't watch the draft lottery because I expected us to not have any luck. <laughs> when is this draft? When has this franchise ever had any good luck? Now, please name me one time that this this iteration of the Hornets has ever had any good luck. I'll wait. There is none. So, <laughs> with that being said, I didn't expect. No, I didn't expect anything to change. I it, I actually missed like because at some point I did go on my phone and just see what was going on. And so I actually missed when the when the Hornets got announced. So when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, twelve. Okay, cool, whatever." I'm with Vince. The only thing that really set me was like, "Wow." Well, I was happy that the Lakers did not get the number one pick. I, I was Man, too I, happy I, with that. Thrown all I, was, shit off the I, I genuinely thought it was going to be Cleveland. I, I thought it was going to be Cleveland. Really. I would have stopped watching would, basketball if it was the Lakers. Like, I would have. Seriously. I'd have been like, Reed. I, 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 I thought it would have been Cleveland because it would have set up perfectly that once LeBron's time is up in L.A., he goes back, back to, to Cleveland. Cleveland for his last but spot. One, one of them I want to say, man. See, I, I, I suffer from trauma. I suffer from deep trauma with the draft lottery. Let me explain why. 2000, uh, I don't know, 11, something like that. The Hornets had a draft lottery meeting slash party, whatever you want to call it. It was for season ticket holders who wanted to renew and all the stuff. It was about 10 people there. <laughs> and I was there, and they were going through the picks. And I don't know who it was, but with the number two pick, and it said Bobcats. And I had a set of keys in my hand, and I just threw them down as hard as I can. And I just, my head just sunk, and I was like, I, what else can we do, man? <laughs> I still have trauma from that day. Now I, I can't go through this again. That's why I, I didn't watch it, man. I'm gonna apologize in advance for being this guy. Okay, as much as I hate what happened on that fateful night, I, I feel like I'm obligated to throw out there that the team that has had the greatest eyes of getting the number one pick never gets in there. Never, never get, get like yeah. I, I think. I think if you got to put a percentage on it. I think maybe 10 or 12 percent in the mm. history of all the draft artists has the team with the highest chance ever gotten the number one pick. So now unless you got a cold envelope so and I, your name is Patrick Ewing. Well, and he denies that flatly. He denies that. <laughs> but see, and it's funny because like I never heard about the envelope story until like a year or two ago. I actually read as a kid that the three top teams that, that, that had a chance at number one pick actually went out back and were shooting dice. To see who would be the <laughs> that's, that's the story I grew up it with. It man. I, this is something that has been on my mind all week, and I have to talk about this. I absolutely have to talk about this. Sure. And I cannot believe I am going to speak in favor <laughs> of the Pelicans for, for one moment in time. Because I otherwise screw that whole city. But for one moment in time, I'm going to speak in favor of the Pelicans. This, this is something I really don't like, man. <laughs> all week... I had been seeing from national media guys, mm. Zion could go back to Duke. Does Zion really want to play for the Pelicans? I don't know how I feel about Zion going to the Pelicans. We have to, as Hornets fans, we have to be, we have to be. What, the Pelicans. what would we think if that was us? Yeah, that was what us. if it was yeah. the Hornets? What if, what if it was like, well, does Zion really want to go play with the Hornets? Well, you got to look at the Hornets history, blah, blah, blah. That is trash journalism. That is that is absolute garbage. That is the most dumbest shit. It I is. Have and if me and you get in front of the camera and we're like, he should go back to college, we're fans. Yeah, right. We, we're allowed to do right. those dumbass houses. Right, 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 right. But Colin Coward right. got on his show and spent a good 15, 20 minutes trying to justify, justify him going back to why he should, and, and we just spent the entire year. Telling him 
not to even play because if he wins this year, hello, 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 and, and now we're telling hello, him to go back to college because you might get drafted. Oh, you don't. Oh, you you don't want to play for New Orleans team is going to hand the kids to you. See, and the thing is, y'all know we could go on and on about this all day, so we're going to try to keep this yeah. short. But we know national media always tries to like finagle and find a way to asso to 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 associate star college players with big markets. It yeah. seems like the entire national media, the entire sports world is like, we really want him to go to New York because because that story is a better sell than Zion going even to New Atlanta Orleans. too. They were they were bigging up Atlanta too. Right. And, 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 the, and the thing is, like again, I I have to boost this crew up. This is why we started this. Because that kind of trash, like I just cannot get, I don't care how much I hate New Orleans. Agree, man. agree. Same. I cannot get with that kind of trash media, man. That, yeah, that is. That, that's, there's just, and, and now. Under construction of, can't get jiggy with that <laughs> shit. <laughs> one, one, one thing, we have never, ever, ever, ever have a prospect and like, man, go back to school before you play for this. Exactly. What does that ever happen? Like, imagine, imagine them telling Shaq, oh, you don't need to play for, yeah, play for Orlando. A couple, a weeks, on, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the uh, the SGA, uh, Miles Bridges right. um, debacle. And you asked a question, if that's the situation that would get that publication, the press pass mm. um, um, banned. And right. you got to say no, because it's strictly basketball. Right. That is something telling him to go back to school because who wants to go play for that team in right. Louisiana? I'm still not calling by the name. Right. That is something that <laughs> if hates. I was if I was an owner, I would be like calling Coward, no, you can't come here. No, because that, that that's this just Bush League. That's that's Bush League. Totally agree, man. Totally agree. So, all right, we're but, gonna, all right, I just wanna say one look, thing. Look, y'all, look. No, 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 I just wanna say one thing. <laughs> Did you guys see the meme where Zion Look like Booger McFarland. <laughs> 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 the, uh, the New Orleans food. That that was yeah. And, and, the, and the crazy thing, I, I, I can I can pass with that. <laughs> that, that was like now now for those of you that are listening to this podcast in true podcast format, you're probably hearing a lot of rattling right now. And the reason why you're hearing that rattling is because our host, Mr. Rodney Richardson, is is, is putting a bunch of peanuts in his um. And his 16 ounce Pepsi right now. Because North Carolina and South Carolina and the South is country. And we eat that and they didn't believe me. And the segue into our culture part. Oh, we man. we posted a poll on our Facebook page a couple weeks ago. And we, we asked... Which, which over a thousand of y'all responded. 1,500. So we appreciate, we appreciate the participation. But we asked the question, if you were familiar with putting peanuts in your Coke or your Pepsi. And unfortunately, a vast majority, seventy-five <laughs> percent of you, say yes. So, me, me and Vince are dumbfounded I'm, right I'm, now. because they think that because they live in Charlotte, they're East Coast. But Vince is country. Vince is country. We, we don't have stoplights where I grew up at. We don't even have a stoplight. Well, when, when you don't know the other people. <laughs> it's like if you, you don't know the other twelve people living in your city. You ain't never heard that before. He Come on, man. Twelve people. <laughs> Look, oh, to this day, like I, I, I can't, I can't believe that. So could I'm gonna do a taste test. Let me do a taste test. I never had it before. I've heard of it. Because I'm really from the south. You've never had it, so you I only knew of it. But you've never I never had it. it, but I've heard of it. Like, Go for it. All right, y'all. He's tasting it. Um, um, the face doesn't look favorable. It, yeah, right it now. doesn't. It doesn't support the the pole. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> okay. I mean, now, I don't get my hands. For those, you, for those who don't know the history, you know, I'm kind of like the statistician on the group. Um, statistician, how you mm -hmm. say? So, here's what happened. Back in the day, like in the 1930s or whatnot. It's savory and sweet. When people was like working the fields and everything, the reason why they started putting their peanuts in their soda was because they didn't want the peanuts to touch their dirty hands. Mm -hmm. So, it was nothing like, oh my God, let me let me put this bacon on this donut right quick because I want to be different, <laughs> you know. Let me try something that like shouldn't even go together. Like, they just... Bacon on donut is delicious. It, I have never tried it. Look, 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 let me shout out Duck Donut <laughs> because you guys have a delicious maple bacon donut and if I was not on this diet, I would eat the shit out you every fucking day. <laughs> Chuck Donuts is awesome, by the way. But yeah, go ahead. Try to make. Uh, I, I, I want to bring it for you guys. Bacon and donuts just don't go. It, it is so good. 
You got to get expand your anyway, palate. Expand your palate. That sour peas are peanuts and soda. Um, apparently, depending on where you live at in the world, dictates what you put your peanuts in. Some people say Pepsi's better. Some people say Coke is better. Coke's um, from Georgia. Coke is trash. The class, the the, the <laughs> class Coke is better. Some people even put. I even saw chill wine a few times. There's a lot of things from Georgia that's trash right now. We won't forget that. Yeah. yeah. If, no, no, no. Really. Falcons, right, Hawks, class. everything. All right, so uh, we kind of ready to segue into the culture segment. Uh, there was some big, huge news today. Uh, billionaire Robert Johnson. Uh, Recently got an honorary degree from Morehouse College down in Atlanta. It's an all-male school, HBCU, historically black college. Uh, he got an honorary doctorate. And he made a statement that was profound to me. He was like, I'm your classmate. I'm one of y'all. And so me and my family are starting a grant to pay off everyone's student loans. And every it's $40 million. Wow, man. He's a wow. billionaire. Yeah. Mr. Johnson, my name is Rodney. <laughs> I am a 2010 graduate of Clemson University. I have thousands of dollars in student loans. I'm your brother. Help me out. <laughs> God, what do you think? Okay, so I've known who Robert Johnson is for a couple of years now. Uh, I know he's like a philanthropist and a uh, big time investor. I've always asked the question, like, does he give back? Because even though he's a philanthropist, like I've never really seen anything that he's done. Well, he well did, he's done. He's he's given five million to the African American Museum okay. in uh, DC okay. before okay. they got built. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I, I didn't know that. Yeah. But what he did today answers that question. Right. And like I, I, I there's, there's nothing else to say other than like that. That's a big time move. So congratulations to that 2019 class who just got all their student loans wiped out. Um, definitely make good use of your I mean, you found fortune right. and you, that was just that was just big time you know big, big ups to, um, to Mr. Johnson on that um, the first thing I want to say is I wish Mr. Johnson was a Gardner Webb <laughs> and I wish he was around near 2002 but anyway um, <laughs> we old as hell. yeah I am <laughs> we, 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 we were established that but um, I, I know I know Mr. Johnson from being uh, mentioned, you know, uh, before the purchase of, of Mr. Tepper. But I, I remember Mr. Johnson from being mentioned uh, with possible ownership of all the Carolina Panthers. I didn't know a, lo a lot about him, but I had the same questions uh, Vince had as far as uh, philanthropy is concerned. And for him to, you know, for him to to reward those those graduates like that in, in that way is. It's unheard of. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. not anything I've ever seen from anyone before. I've literally never heard of anything of anybody doing like that. Like that's a, <laughs> that's a I, blessing. It, 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 it's crazy that you can sit here and you're graduating and you hear someone's speech and it's directed towards you and you're just like, oh man, these words are kind. But when somebody does something like this, they truly care. Mm -hmm. Like they truly, they truly care about your life after. School. After school, they they truly know the challenges that comes with having uh, mountains of debt <laughs> when, you come, when you come out of college. This is a very real life thing for a lot of people that hinders a lot of people. So uh, my hat goes off to Mr. Johnson in a big way, man. That that is a truly awesome thing to do, and hopefully, maybe more billionaires will follow suit. Yeah, I, I doubt I it. Think, I, I think it will. I, I will see others will. And, and, uh, one more and is 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 this. Really good to see that greed doesn't win yeah. for once, man. Yeah. So, yeah. And another reason why this is so big to me, I'm going into my nerd mode. So, it, it jumps into the the, the the wealth piece to me. Uh, African American wealth in this country is seventeen hundred dollars, all liquid, everything, and that's the lowest in the country. So, typically, we're we're, we're saddled with more student loans because we don't have access to. Uh, we were effectively shut out of. Basically, getting money off of housing through through redlining, generational wealth. Yeah, generational wealth, yeah, basically, generational wealth. Yeah, and so this is a big step for these guys to, to to get their student loans paid off because they're not saddled with this debt where as though they can't buy a house yeah. soon, and then they have to worry about this because honestly, student loans is going to be with you for the rest of your life, and the interest grows every year. And you, 
wake, can you, and, you wake up one morning and the balance is higher than it was two years ago. Right. And, I've been there. And to caveat off of that, in the grand scheme of things, this is a beautiful thing, no matter what. But just imagine how it affects each student individually. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to throw a degree program out there. I'm not really trying to shit on it. But like, let's say you majored in art, right? You might have $10,000 in student loans. And that's still a lot coming fresh out of college. Right. But if you became a doctor, you got about eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars in student loan. So just what think how pay? much, how much more excited that person. Yeah, is. right, right. So right. that, like, like I'm, I'm looking at it more so as far as the ones who came out with those higher numbers. And with me being a real estate agent, one of the biggest things, one of the it's biggest long. problems I see, people not being able to buy a house. All right. Student loans. Student loans. Student loans. Yeah. That that is the number one killer that I've seen personally that has kept people from buying a home. Yeah. And for someone to do that, listen, we haven't seen any video or anything like that. But if I'm sitting in a graduation ceremony and my whoever is speaking goes up there and says, Hey, I'm paying everybody student loans. I'm breaking all types of protocol. Well, who you <laughs> I'm running on who's that stage. Right. I'm running on that stage. I know, right? It was like when. Right. 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 Hey, it was when, when, when Magic hugged Kareem, like his first lady his name, and, and Kareem was like, look, don't do that again. Right. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Like, 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 no problem with you, Like, like Drake hugged star basketball yeah. players. Like, I don't want to go back there. Oh, man. But hey, real talk, hey, big so, ups. Big ups to Mr. Johnson again, and uh, you know, good stuff on that. Yeah. Drake, stay the hell away from Dabo. <laughs> <laughs> Please stay away from Dabo. We do not need that. All right, so we're going to segue to our final Clemson topic. Clemson needs you, Drake. Clemson really needs you. Drake. <laughs> Florida State needs you. Florida's beautiful. Florida's hot. Go to Florida. Okay, so we're going to segue into our shout outs. Shout it out. <laughs> right now. See, uh, this is what Who happens when you take a break. I like shouting I don't, I don't recognize today. this Rodney right now, yeah, but. Who are you shouting out today? <laughs> I say. Vince, you got the stage. Yeah, you go first, Rodney. You, right. you got the energy. <laughs> All right. Um, I was disappointed that I missed this shout out uh, our last show, but I want to shout out the teachers that marched the Columbia rally. Uh, under construction stands with you. You deserve higher pay, more access to things, uh, more 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 resources afforded to you. Uh, we stand with you. Next time you march, I'm gonna try to march with you. I'm gonna have my red shirt on. Teachers matter too. I'm done. That's all that matters to me today. I'm gonna shout out our boy Vince. Congratulations on on graduating. Oh, Woo! Yeah, I'm shouting out my boy Vince. Man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I am also. You got stripped no more face man. <laughs> Ones are on deck. <laughs> but, uh, um, I'm also uh, going to shout out uh, Mike Kitchen, uh, Preach Jacobs, uh, Lonnie uh, for a great event last night. Um, thank you for bringing tall black guy. Google him. I know a lot of y'all don't know who that is. But uh, shout out to y'all for a great event last night. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. If he doesn't move, okay. I don't know who he is. So I'm going to shout out um, once again the people. I know I've kind of been doing this every other week. But the last week, week and a half has been probably the most disgusting that I've seen in American politics since our last presidential election. And um, this, the, all these states passing all these abortion bills, yeah. it's just, it's just trash. It's, 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 it's moronic, and I really do feel feel bad for all the women that they're having to fight this. Yeah. With that being said, shout out to everyone once again who are using their social media to speak out against all this bigotry and they're not posting gym selfies and look at the food I'm <laughs> eating and all this stuff. And for the one, I, 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 I feel like it's a shot. I, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's not even a shot because like I'm slowly getting into it because I understand the, re, the, you, the, just the, the uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? But uh, to everyone who, who are looking at these, these social matters, and they're speaking out, and they're speaking out, and they're starting to get active. Right. Like, right. shout out to all of you. I, I I don't think those type of people get enough respect. Right. I, I I want I want to embrace Nipsey before Nipsey gets killed, and then everybody knows who Nipsey is. All right, 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 right. So I think we definitely need to start coming together, 
and, and, and standing up to a lot of this bigotry and oppression that we're dealing with in this country right now. But once again, just shout out to everybody who's who's trying to make some sort of positive change. Yeah, all right, and uh, that's the uh, close of our show. And, and next week, uh, Ryan and I will introduce our poetry. No, no. <laughs> oh, I'm going to close the show out with a segment. <laughs> we got some spoken word for y'all. Spoken word. <laughs> Hotep. No tip. Holiday Inn. <laughs> Eurostep. James Harden from the three. Swish. Steph Curry hit another one. Warriors win another one. <laughs> Goodbye.